Section 1.7, Diagonal, Triangular, and Symmetric Matrices. A square matrix in which all the entries off the main diagonal are zero is called a diagonal matrix. A general n by n diagonal matrix D can be written as follows. A diagonal matrix is invertible if and only if all its diagonal entries are non-zero. In this case, the inverse of the diagonal matrix D is given right over here. Notice all we did was take the entries along the main diagonal and put them in the denominator. We basically took the reciprocals, so just take uh, one over each of them. If k is a positive integer, then d to the k is just the diagonal matrix where each of the entries is raised to the kth power. This should make sense because when you multiply, you know, each of these matrices, if you were to let's say, you know, take two of them and put them side by side, then the zeros would cancel out so many different um, entries and uh, when you're uh, writing out the product for each of the rows and columns, all you would really have left is the um, diagonals being multiplied by each other. As an example, how about we compute uh, a inverse a to the fifth and a to the minus five for this matrix right over here. So we could do a inverse first. All we have to do is just take the reciprocal of uh, each of the entries in the main diagonal. So one over one stays one, and then we keep the zeros. Uh, minus three becomes minus one third, and two becomes a half. A to the fifth, we'll just take each of the Diagonals raise it to the fifth power, one to the fifth stays one. And then negative three to the fifth becomes negative 243. And two to the fifth is just 32. So pretty easy to take powers of diagonal matrices. A to the minus fifth, gonna be pretty similar. We'll just again have that one and then we'll have negative one over 243 and one over 32. To multiply matrix A on the left by a diagonal matrix D, Multiply successive rows of A by the successive diagonal entries of D, and to multiply A on the right by D, multiply successive columns of A by the successive diagonal entries of D. So all we have to do is basically um, scale the rows or columns when multiplying by diagonal matrices. We'll scale the rows and columns of the matrix that we're multiplying the diagonal by. A square matrix in which all the entries above the main diagonal are zero is called lower triangular, and a square matrix in which all the entries below the main diagonal are zero is called upper triangular. A matrix that is either upper triangular or lower triangular is called triangular. So it doesn't have to be both. Both would be uh, diagonal. So let's uh, just write the general four by four upper and lower triangular matrices. How about uh, Let's see, we'll do the um, upper one first. So that means that we're looking at entries below the main diagonal to be zero. Okay, so I'll write A11, A12, A13, and A14, because it's four by four, so I only have four columns. Then I should have a zero under here. My next diagonal be A22, then A23, A24, A25, A26, A27, A28, A29, and A30. So A22, A23, A24, A25, A26, A27, A28, A29, and A30. So A22, A23, A24, A25, A26, A27, A28, A29, and A30. My third row, I get another zero. And for my uh, fourth row, I get another zero. Notice here's my main diagonal. And all of the entries that are below it are zero. So really the only like meat of this matrix is the upper part. So we call it upper triangular.
Okay, as for lower triangular, I'm just going to put the zeros on top now. Pretty similar. So we get 3 on the top. Then we get 2 in the row below that. And then we get 1. And then uh, this entire row has uh, entries that don't have to be 0. Okay, so that would be lower triangular because the bulk of that matrix, the non zero entries, are on the lower part. Observe that diagonal matrices are both upper triangular and lower triangular since they have zeros below and above the main diagonal. Observe also that a square matrix in row echelon form is upper triangular since it has zeros below the main diagonal. Remember, we have all those leading ones, and then underneath is all zeros. So it automatically becomes uh, upper triangular. The transpose of a lower triangular matrix is upper triangular, and the transpose of an upper triangular matrix is lower triangular. Should make sense, you interchange the rows and columns, so lower becomes upper, upper becomes lower. The product of lower triangular matrices is lower triangular, and the product of upper triangular matrices is upper triangular. Should also make sense, the zeros in the bottom will cancel off uh, when you multiply. A triangular matrix is invertible if and only if its diagonal entries are all non-zero. The inverse of an invertible lower triangular matrix is lower triangular, and the inverse of an invertible upper triangular matrix is upper triangular. These two points should kind of make sense. If you um, had all the diagonal, and if you had some of the diagonal entries equal to zero, then you wouldn't be able to put it into reduced row echelon form. You wouldn't be able to get leading ones over there. We won't prove that, but we will take it for granted. So let's consider the upper triangular matrices A and B. What can we say about A inverse, B inverse, AB, and BA? Well, uh, how about we? Well, it looks like we have non-zero entries in the main diagonal, so it looks like A is invertible. Uh, but there's a zero entry right there for B, so not B. Uh, let's see. A is upper triangular, so that means A inverse is upper triangular. It also means that if we take A and multiply it by B, then that'll be upper triangular. So we could say A inverse AB and BA are upper triangular. We can compute A inverse by adjoining the identity matrix to A and then reducing A to reduce our echelon form. Notice all we really have to do is make this into a leading one, make this into a leading one, get rid of these guys. So you should be able to uh, imagine this dividing by two, this dividing by five. So it shouldn't be too surprising that the inverse ends up becoming one, negative three over two, seven fifths, 0 half, negative 2 fifths, 0, 0, 1 fifth, which is upper triangular as promised. We could also compute the product. We would get 3 minus 2 minus 2, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 5, also upper triangular. And remember, the product is not necessarily commutative, and in this case it is not. If we take the product with uh, BA instead of AB, then we get 3, 5, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 5, 0, 0, 5, which, although it is not the same as AB, is still upper triangular. A matrix, a square matrix, is said to be symmetric if A is equal to its transpose. 
which of the following matrices are symmetric? Well, let's see. Uh, but we take uh, the first one and transpose it. So I'll take 7 minus 3 minus 3, 5, and I will transpose that, interchange the rows and columns, and I will get, let's see, 7 minus 3 could become my first column, and then minus 3, 5 becomes my second column. Oh, well, that's equal. So that first one is definitely symmetric. Let's look at the second one. One, four, five, oops. four minus three, zero, five, zero, seven. We'll transpose that. And how about again, I'll take that first row, make that my first column. Second row, second column and third row, uh, third column. And again, no change. All right, so that's symmetric two. Let's look at the last one. Zero, zero, D three, and zero, 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 D four. Okay, let's transpose that guy. Well, it should be pretty clear that that's gonna become my first column. That'll be my second column. Third column, you can already see where this is going. So, yep, it looks like every single one of these was symmetric. I'm going to write all of them. Notice this is just the general uh, 4 by 4 diagonal. If A and B are symmetric matrices with the same size, and if K is any scalar, then the transpose is symmetric. A plus B and A minus B are symmetric, and KA is symmetric. And it should make sense that if A is symmetric, it's transpose would be like, the, that's the whole point, right? The product of two symmetric matrices is symmetric if and only if the matrices commute. To prove this, let's let A and B be symmetric matrices the same size. Then the transpose of the product, remember, is the product of the transposes in the reverse order. But they're both symmetric, so that means that that's just uh, BA. So AB transpose is a. So that means that this thing can only equal AB if AB equals BA, which means that it's the same thing as just saying that A and B commute. Okay, which of these products is symmetric? Uh, let's take a look at the first one. So we've got 1, 2, 2, 3, Multiply that by minus 4, 1, 1, 0. And that's minus 2, 1, minus 5, 2. OK, so that's not symmetric. Because if you take a minus 2, 1, then you get a 1 over there when you put the 1 down there. All right, how about we look at the next product? One, two, two, three. Multiply that by minus four, three, three minus one. Okay, so I get two, one, one, three. Oh, perfect. When I swap that, that becomes two, one, and then I'll get one, three. So yeah, that's symmetric. Notice this matrix symmetric, this matrix symmetric, this matrix the same. This one is also symmetric, but we multiplied by this symmetric matrix and we did not get one that was symmetric. And we multiplied by this metric matrix and we got one that was. So you have to be a little bit careful just because you multiply symmetric matrices doesn't necessarily mean that you 
get a symmetric matrix. Doesn't mean that you don't get one either. If A is an invertible symmetric matrix, then A inverse is symmetric. All right, how about we prove this by assuming that A is symmetric and invertible? Okay, then the transpose of A inverse is just the uh, inverse of A transpose. The inverse of A transpose is just uh, A inverse because A is symmetric. Perfect. So A inverse must be symmetric. If A is an invertible matrix, then A, A transpose and A transpose A are also invertible. Since A is invertible, so is A transpose, as we've seen. Thus, A, A transpose and A transpose A are invertible since they're the products of invertible matrices. In fact, uh, if A is an n by a matrix, then A transpose is an n by a matrix, so the products A, A transpose and A transpose A are both square matrices. The matrix A, A transpose has size m cross n by m, and the matrix A transpose A has size n by n. Such products are always symmetric, since if we look at uh, A, A transpose transpose, we can use the um, fact that the transpose of a product is the product of the transposes in the reverse order. So I'll take this and transpose it, and then I'll take this and transpose that and multiply them but A transpose transpose is just A. So the transpose of A transpose is just A transpose. Okay, so it equals symmetric, it equals transpose. And similarly, A transpose A transpose, again, just take the uh, product, reverse the order, and then these transposes cancel and you just get A. Let's compute A transpose A and A transpose for this two by three matrix just to show you that this is true. So I'll take A transpose A and I get 1, 3, minus 2, 0, 4, minus 5 when I take the transpose. I'll multiply that by 1, minus 2, 4, 3, 0, minus 5, and I'll get uh, 10 minus 2, 11, minus 2, 4, minus 8, minus 11, minus 8, and uh, 41. Notice that if I transpose this thing, these guys stay where they are on the diagonal. The minus 2 swaps to the minus 2 stays the same, minus 8 stops and minus 8 stays the same. And oops, I forgot my minus sign right over there. Yep, I need that to be the same. Okay, perfect, so that's symmetric as desired. Let's look at uh, A, A transpose. So that's one minus two, four, three, zero, minus five. And we'll multiply that by one, three, minus two, zero, four, minus five and we get 21, minus 17, minus 17, 34, which is uh, symmetric because the minus 17 swaps when you take the transpose, so it equals its transpose.